Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the Auto Center form property in Microsoft Access. I'm gonna show you how to use it, what it's good for, and why I thought for many years it didn't work, because it didn't really. <laughs> okay, so the Auto Center property of a form will make it so that the form opens up in the middle of the access application window. Now, it doesn't take into consideration the navigation pane or the ribbon across the top up here, all right? And normally, if you take a form and move it over here, let's say, and save it there, control S, all right? Save that position, close it, open it back up again, and it, it usually opens up in the same spot, all right? Move it down here, save it, control S, all right? Close it, open it and it opens up in the same spot. And even if you move it over here during the course of using it, if you close it and reopen it, it will open back up where you saved it last in form view. And of course, if you're a beginner, make sure you're using overlapping windows, not the tabbed document interface. I covered that in my Access Beginner 1 class. Or you can go watch this video, which explains it. I like the individual overlapping windows and not the big tab documents. That's just my per personal preference. Now, what Auto Center does, if you go into Design View here, go to the Forms Properties by clicking on that little box right there, and you'll find on the Format tab, Auto Centers right there. Now, it's normally set to No. We're going to change that to Yes. Save it, close it, close it, and open it, and it pops up right in the middle of the screen. And even if you move it over here and save it and close it and open it, it still goes right back to the middle of the screen. So sometimes that's desirable, sometimes it's not. Depends on what you want to do. And notice that it centers perfectly, if you look here, it centers perfectly on the right side. What is that, about uh, 270 pixels? And over here, from there to there, let's see, that's about 270-ish pixels, right? Top to bottom, though, it usually rides a little high. Right, if you look at from here to here, for example, that's, uh, what, 118 vertical. And down here we got, uh, what, 230. So it always rides a little bit high, but I guess that's just the way that Microsoft thinks that people want their forms to appear, I guess. I don't know. We'll talk about this at the end of class a little bit more. But it's basically centered, basically. I might not have said every single syllable, but yeah, I basically said the words. Movie quote, what was it? Now, here's the rub. If you go in and let's say this is a pop-up form, all right, where's the pop-up setting? Under other and then change pop-up to yes. Same thing happens with dialogues, all right? If you close it and then open it, save it, open it back up again, all right, it works, but it didn't always work. It used to happen a lot in older versions of Access, especially with multi-monitor setups, and I've had a multi-monitor setup since I can remember probably going back since the 90s. Um, if you had access on one screen, the pop-up window could appear anywhere. It could appear, appear on the different screen in different locations. Um, it was extremely unreliable. In fact, if you go and Google Access Auto Center not working for pop-up or dialog forms, there's tons of discussions from around that time period, 2007, 2002, 2011, 2013. It seems like Microsoft fixed this somewhere around 2013, but I never got the memo. I just stopped using it. I don't really like to use pop-up forms in general. I, I try to. I usually try to stay away from them, mostly because of this problem, because they're very unreliable where they appear. And so I kind of wrote them off years and years ago. In fact, if you are a beginner and you want to learn more about modal and pop-up windows, go watch this video. I talk about them in a lot more detail and why I generally don't use pop-up forms. But I recently did a developer level video called the custom message box where we make a new message box that you can pop up a pop-up form. It's basically a dialogue form, which is also a pop-up so that you can customize it with colors and the buttons and all that stuff. And one of the problems is getting it to center perfectly in the middle of the screen. Well, I always thought that with pop-ups and dialogues, auto center didn't do its job properly because it didn't for many, many years. In fact, I even went and asked chat GPT about it. And GPT even said, yeah, there was some problems with Auto Center, particularly around the 2007, 2013 releases. And it was more pronounced in multi-monitor setups, which was me, which is why I stopped using them. You can pause the video and read that if you really want to. But it turns out that Microsoft did fix it a few years back. 
And thanks to Simon on YouTube for pointing that out to me. So it looks like now, and I just tested it a whole bunch, looks like now it is quite reliable. It does work for me. I've got a multi-monitor setup, and I tried a bunch of different databases with some pop-up forms and some dialogue forms, and it is working well now. So for my members who are watching, we did an extended cut with that custom message box where I showed you how with VBA code to center that dialogue over the access window. We figure out the positioning of both windows, we do a little math, and we put it right where we want it. Now that code is still good, it wasn't a waste of time, but you can use the auto center property a little easier. This is still good if you wanna position a pop-up window maybe in a specific spot, like maybe you wanna position it over an existing form, that kind of stuff. So it's definitely good code to have, but auto center will work just fine. Now, speaking of automatically positioning stuff, all right, we got the, we got the auto center on here. Like I mentioned at the top of the video, it centers nicely left and right, right, horizontally, but vertically it's up toward the top. And I think that's by design. I think Microsoft realizes that pop-ups usually want it to be a little higher because it was exactly centered. It would be kind of down here, right? And that's, it does kind of look a little low visually. So how can we adjust that? Well, here's a little bonus for developers. And if you're not a developer yet and you want to be, go watch my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long and it teaches you everything you need to know to get started. Don't be scared. VBA is easy to learn. You only need to know a couple commands to make some really cool stuff. Anyways. All you got to do is tell this form, hey, after you open and your auto center property kicks in, move down just a little bit. How far? Well, that's kind of up to you. Let's say it opens up here and you want to move it down maybe, I don't know, about that far, let's say. All right. That's going to be about maybe 1,500 pixels. Remember, there's twips and pixels and all kinds of weird stuff. So we're going to have to move it down a little bit. Let's say 1,500. All right, let's go into design view. And one of my pet peeves of pop-up forms is they always do this in design view when you switch to design view. And I don't know a way around that. So if any of you guys do, let me know. It just pops it in the upper left corner like that. But go into the forms properties, go to events, find the on open event, use on open. Don't use on load for this one. It seems to not work well in on load. I think because on load, some of the properties aren't available. But when your VBA editor opens up, let me move this over here. All right, all we're going to do is we're going to say, once you've opened up, I want you to move down a little bit, right? So it's going to be me dot move, move the current form. Now, the left property is required. Notice how it's not in brackets and italicized. That means you got to put it in there. But I don't want to change the left. I don't want to say zero either, right? Because that'll move it back to the left. So we have to put in there the current left position, which is me dot window left, right? Whatever the current left position is, and we're not moving it up and down. That should be an optional property access team. Change that, will you? Okay, get on that one. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. All right, top now, top. I want it to go down, right? I wanna I want increase this value a certain amount. So we're gonna say me.window top, wherever you are, plus maybe 1500. Uh, those are twips, by the way, not pixels. Uh, this, the things you see, Windows works in pixels and Access works in twips, and it's about a 15 to one ratio. It's a long, weird discussion. I'll have that in another video. I think I did it in the extended cut that I talked about earlier. All right, but save that. Let's close it. Close it, close it, open it. Boom, there you go. See, it opened up auto-centered about up here and then it moved down a little bit. That's all you gotta do. If you think that's a bit too much, or if you want more, well, you just put it where you wanna put it. You wanna move it down a whole lot? Move it down 4,000, all right? Open it up, boom. And it opened up by my other monitor. That was way too much. <laughs> Let me see here. Yeah, oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes when you sometimes when you move those coordinates, the form resizes just a little bit. So it's 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 not perfect. That's not perfect. But I think this is about a good setting here. Let's see. Close it. Open it. Yeah, that's good. That looks good. All right. So that's the auto center property, and why I generally haven't used it for many years, and why I avoid pop-up forms and all that stuff. And thanks again to Simon for pointing this out to me. And that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. I learned something. I love when you guys teach me stuff, right? Because I do this all day long. I've been doing it for 30 years. And every now and then, especially when you guys point out to me things that have changed that I've missed, right? Because I learned access back in the 90s and 2000s and coming up. And, and, and there's some stuff that I haven't used a lot. And I don't always catch it when the, when the Microsoft team 
puts in new features. It was different back in the day when like, um, you know, a new, a big new version's coming out, Access 2003 or, you know, 2007, and you'd buy the book and you'd read what was new, right? But now, especially with, with Office 365, they're constantly pushing new stuff out, including bugs, but no, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. So I, I sometimes miss new stuff myself. So I love it. If you guys come up with anything new that I might have missed in a video or I don't know about, I love when you guys teach me too. I love this a, a two-way conversation. So feel free to post in the comments down below or even drop me an email. Let me know. Hey, Rick, you messed up. This this works now. Oh, okay, great. There's a lot of stuff that I skipped, like form layouts, for example, back in the day when I think they were released in 2007 when the ribbon was released. I still to this day don't really like form layouts, but they do have some good uses. For example, anchoring is really cool. I could talk forever about this stuff. I'm going to let you guys go. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started.
Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.